What's good guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how you can clone any app using Flutterflow. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to do from A to Z. Now before we get started, if you like no code, you want to learn no code, you want to build software without writing a single line of code, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment to let me know what you think about this video or if you have any questions or concerns. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to a site that we want to clone and we need to think about what kind of things do we want to clone. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to be looking at Airbnb and we're going to be building a prototype that works like Airbnb. And so to simplify things, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the data that Airbnb is showing and we're gonna put it inside the app that we are building. When you're building out the production app, you obviously wanna change the data out for the data you're gonna have in your own app. Now, once you have the site chosen, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna download an extension called Scrape Similar, okay? simply google for scrape similar chrome extension you're gonna see it here you can open it up and you want to install this extension i already have this extension installed so i'm gonna skip this step once you have the extension installed you're gonna go to a site that you want to clone and you're gonna look at different things that you want to clone so right now i'm looking at airbnb and what i want to do is i want to clone the images i want to clone the location i want to clone the distance the dates and the cost per night and also we can clone the the rating as well okay so now that we have the extension installed what you guys want to do is you want to right click and you want to say scrape similar okay once you do that what you guys want to do is you want to use this information here i already have a pre preset here and once we have this preset and once you load this extension you're gonna see that we have the city names right these are all the city names that are displayed here next you want to go to Google Sheets and you want to create an empty spreadsheet. Once you have that, you can simply click on copy to clipboard. You can go back here and you can paste it. Okay, we're going to call this top column as location. And you want to do the same thing for the other pieces of data that you want to incorporate into your app. So I'm going to right click on this uh, distance here as well. I'm going to hit scrape similar. And now we have the data here. So I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to copy this to clipboard. I'm going to go back here paste it i'm gonna call this distance and i'm gonna do the same thing for dates as well copy the clipboard and last but not least we also want the price and here's the price copy to clipboard paste it right here and next we also want the rating okay now before we go further you want to fix up this data you want to clean it up a little bit. so as you can see here it's kind of doubling here so what you want to do is you want to fix it up here really really easily you just want to have the number in here. So I'm going to leave 200. I'm going to leave this. All right. So as you can see, now we have the prices all nicely formatted. And you want to do the same thing for the distance as well. Okay. So now it looks good. We have the location. We have the distance. And we have the dates here as well as the price. Now for the rating, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to create random values here. For instance, maybe something like this. All right. So now we have random values as a rating from 1 to 5. Now that you have this data here, you want to go into Google's Firebase and you want to click on get started here and you want to hit add a project here. We're going to call this Airbnb Flutter app. We're going to hit continue. We're going to say create project. We're going to hit continue. Next, we're going to go to Firestore database. We're going to say create database Going to hit enable. Okay, so now our database has been created in Google's Cloud Firestore. The next thing that we need to do is we need to import the data that we have here into the database here. And for that, we're going to be using a really nice tool called Firefoo. Once you download this tool, you're going to have it right here. This is what it looks like. Now, once you configure this app, what you're going to see inside this app is the data that you have here. So for instance, here I have a collection called Accommodations. And I have a document inside that collection. And this document has the following field. And if we go into this app, you can see that we have that collection here as well. This is the collection and we have an empty document. So now that we have that here, what you guys want to do is you want to go back to this spreadsheet. You want to go file, download, comma, separated values. And next you want to go back to the app and you want to say import documents. We're going to choose the file and it's going to auto detect 
all the field and it's gonna match them up. So make sure they're matching perfectly and they should. We're gonna say import. All right, so it looks like it imported. Now, if you right click here and you do refresh, you will see all the data here. These are all the records, including our empty record, which we can delete essentially. I'm gonna go here, delete document, okay? So now we have all of this data in our database. This app has served its purpose. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go into Flutterflow and create an app to use this data. I'm gonna sign in into my Flutterflow account. I'm gonna do create project. I'm gonna call this Airbnb test app. I'm gonna say create new. I'm gonna do next step. In this part, we wanna configure our Firebase DB. This is optional, but obviously we're using a Firebase DB, so this is important. And so it's asking us for a Firebase project ID. We're gonna go back here, click on this gear icon, project settings. And we're gonna copy this project ID here. Paste it here, connect. It needs to have access to the account. We're gonna do auto generate config files, generate files, and we're gonna do start building. Okay, so now that we have the UI, we have kind of the basic screen here. What we wanna do is we want to go into settings right here, into database settings, and we wanna create that collection so that a Flutterflow understands the schema and kind of the data that we're dealing with. So our collection is called accommodations. We're gonna do create, and now we need to add the fields. And the fields that we have are dates, distance, location, price, rating. So we're gonna do dates, location, distance, dates, price, and rating. So now that we defined our schema, you wanna go into settings and you wanna hit validate to make sure that it's set up properly. Okay, it's telling us validation status is successful. Now that we've done this step, we can start building the UI and this is the fun part, okay? So here you can set your app bar style. I'm just gonna do this one, this classic one here. And now we need to build the app. The first thing that we need to do is we need to build a list. This is gonna be a list, right? Because if you go back to Airbnb, and actually, if you're using Chrome, you can do inspect, and then you can choose this thing here, this icon here at the bottom, which is gonna switch to a mobile view. And so, as you can see, this is a list view, essentially, right? We have this search bar here, which we can use as well, but the, the main part of the app is this list view, image, and then a bunch of text here, which is what we need to do. So we're gonna go back to the app, and what we wanna do is we want that search bar, first of all. So I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna find the search bar. So here's the search bar. Let's see, that looks really nice. Here's, a, here's another one. So I'm gonna use this one right here. And there you have it. There you have the search bar nicely created. Next, what we guys wanna do is we wanna go back here and we want to create a list view. So this column here has the search bar, but what we wanna do is we wanna add an element. We're gonna say list view. Now this is gonna be the list view. This list view is gonna be a collection of different items. So if we click this plus button, we can create it from scratch or we can go here and we can find something that works really, really well. And actually I found something that's perfect for what we are trying to do. So a card house listing is perfect, right? And so that's kind of what we have. This thing is a list view, okay? That means it's gonna get repeated uh, depending on the data that we're getting. Now, if you click on the list view, you wanna go into this backend query section and you wanna say query collection, you wanna say accommodations, and you wanna say confirm, okay? Once you do that, you can see that it's repeating, it's starting to repeat, okay? Now we have two of these. That means it understands that this is now a list view and that this is gonna repeat. Next thing you guys wanna do is you wanna configure different things here, okay? So if you click on this, you wanna set it from a variable, right? We're gonna set it from a variable, we're gonna get accommodation, and we're gonna say, well, this is gonna be the name, I believe. So if we go back here, location. So it's gonna be location, distance, dates, price, and then rating here. So it's gonna say location, confirm. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna say price, price. And then we have a rating here. We're gonna say this is gonna be a rating. All right, so that's kind of what we have. It's not exactly kind of what we want, but that's easy to fix. Right now, what we want to do is we want to make sure it's actually legit. Actually, we can change it here too, to listing, something like this. Now, let's run this app and make sure that we're actually displaying the right data. We're going to hit run. 
And so now when we run the app, this is the results we're getting. It looks pretty good, you gotta admit. This is the original app, Airbnb. It says where to, and we have a whole list here with different stats. And this is kind of what we're seeing. Obviously we can change this to where to very, very easily, and we can add more fields. So let's do that right now real quick, just to show you how it can be done. We can go in here, and we can scroll down, and we can change this where to where to question mark and now for this thing right here as you can see this is a built-in widget here okay this thing right here this is this this area here this is a built-in widget this is this house card here and we have all of these things and so what we can do is uh as you can see so we have a big column here we have an, a main image and then we have another row with text another row with text and then we have a container so what we can do is Depending on what we want to add, if you want to add something that looks like a location or something that looks like distance, in fact, I think it's going to be something that this, that looks like distance, we can simply right click and duplicate, okay? We can do it like this or we can add another row. So depending on how you want to do it, I can just go in here. So I can go in here and say, okay, I want another row, okay? In fact, what I want to do is I want to duplicate. So I'm going to delete this here and then I can simply duplicate this row can right click and say duplicate and now we have two fields here and we have the rating kind of like what the airb app is right we have a bunch of fields here and we have some text and then we have the rating here if you want now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a detail page and for that we can simply go in here we have the pages we can add a new page right here and we can just say detail call it whatever we want and now we have a page here we can configure it like this and here we can drag all the elements so let's take a look at what it looks like if you click here this is kind of what it looks like right we have this main screen we have this text here we have this detail and what i suggest that you want to do is you want to go in here and you want to essentially get something that looks like uh, something similar so we have a bunch of ui elements here uh, we can scroll down so there we have a listing that we were using we have a main header, we have an image with CTA. So we can start with something like this and then customize it as we want. Very, very easy. And the other thing that we can do is we can essentially pass data. So we're, we can simply go here. If they click on it, we can have a navigation element. So if you go in here, uh, you have this list view here, you have this house card. If they click on the house card, we are going to have an action. We're going to add an action that's going to do a navigate to, a navigate to detail, okay? And it's going to pass the parameters. So maybe this is going to be an ID or the document ID. So for instance, you can pass the document reference here. So you can say this is going to be a doc ref and collection is going to be apartments. We can confirm. And then when we pass it, when we define it, we can just pass the doc ref. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, this is a record. We're going to get a record and we're going to pass the reference, okay? Okay, so we have that. And then on the next page, when we go to the detail page, we have parameters. Okay, so this is our reference. So that way we can, uh, we can get the data. So we can go in here. While we're building this page, we can actually do it on the page level, detail page level. And we can say, well, these are the parameters. We can say this is the document reference and it knows exactly what's happening, right? And then we can go in here and we can say, well, uh, this is document from reference, apartments source is going to be docref that's it and now we have all the data and now you can just simply come in here you can say set from variable we have apartment records from detail and then we can get the data so this is going to be the location or this is going to be distance i think it's going to be a location in this case we can hit confirm and now if you run the app once we click on it it's going to do it correctly so here's the app. If we click on something, it redirects it and it displays this that we set it here. So if you come in back here and you click, let's say this uh, Sue Narrows Nestor Falls, you see that here. Now all you have to do is replace the other stuff and then essentially get more widgets as separate things. So all of these parts, they're gonna be widgets here. All right, guys, so that's how you clone any app that you want, regardless how complex it is, how simple it is from actually getting the data to building the UI to implementing the logic. You can use this for any app out there. It's the same process. It's as simple. 
so that is all that i wanted to show you guys today let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video if you have any questions concerns or anything like that also like this video if you enjoyed it smash the like button if you've gotten some value from this video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in anything related to no code thanks a lot for watching and i'll talk to you real real soon